Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in Mountain View, California at a really cool startup, Phantom Auto. They're coming at this autonomous vehicle thing from a very different direction. They're not a car company. It's a pure software play, but it really has a, a huge impact on the autonomous vehicle industry. Autonomous vehicles are meant for no driver. You guys have a driver, but you're really assisted driving from a remote location. A third party who can provide a safety solution for a number of AV operators. Right, right. Let's say if it's a, you know one of the big OEMs or ride-sharing companies, they can connect to a vehicle remotely, and when they move the steering wheel or press the gas or brake, it would actually happen in real time. Right. We think we have the ultimate fallback mechanism at this point, which is actually still a human. Right. The right. machine is very, very good, but for these edge case scenarios, you still need to bring a human back into the loop. Road construction areas, severe weather conditions, all this stuff happens all the time. Okay. And autonomous vehicles may struggle with the situation, so Phantom Auto uh, provides a solution. Whatever the situation is, get you around an obstruction, pull you over to the side of the road so you're not blocking traffic and in a much safer situation. And a human's cognitive ability to process information on the fly we think that's the hidden key to making autonomous vehicles right. a reality. It's a life-saving technology. You use a lot of off-the-shelf, really simple hardware to execute this. There's Logitech, little steering wheels over there, yeah. the big curved Samsung right. screens, yeah. basic cameras on the car. You plug it in and right. it would just work. Regardless of the kind of vehicle that a company might utilize, we have to be able to control that vehicle smoothly and safely. How do you guys deal with the latency issue? Obviously, that's our secret sauce, but we've been able to get that very, very low. We connect multiple networks at the same time. AT&T, Verizon, you know, and T-Mobile, and a few networks, right? right? Once they're bonded, you get a much stronger connection. These are life-saving vehicles. Everyone wants these deployed as rapidly as possible, but we also want that deployment itself right. to be as safe as possible. AAA uh, did a survey recently that showed 75% of consumers are afraid of trusting the machine, an autonomous vehicle. If you take a step back and look at the forest and not the trees, you have 1.2 million people dying every year worldwide due to traffic accident fatalities, 40,000 in the U.S. in 2016, and 94% is due to human error. If we had that happen even just for two weeks in aviation in the U.S., aviation wouldn't exist right, as we know down. it. So if you eliminate the human for the most part from that equation, you can save a lot of lives. We do view there's going to be uh, you know, a big consumer adoption kind of hurdle to overcome. And a piece of that is having the passengers in the car uh, comfortable and feeling that someone has their back, right? I saw somewhat of an awakening in the government, like we're really scared of this being deployed, but in reality, we should be scared of this not being deployed. Right. We are working with a variety of cybersecurity firms for making sure that our solution is extremely secure, from the hardware that we can offer in the car, to the software, to the actual uh, control center, the operations center where uh, the driver's driving you, making sure that we have end-to-end -end security. The AI, I would say, is about 97, 98% of the way there. The reality of having autonomous vehicles interacting with other autonomous vehicles might create new edge case scenarios that don't don't exist yet. I think the regulators are coming to the realization at this point that if we want to get these vehicles deployed right now, we need to have some sort of bridge to that technological gap to get us from 98% to 100%. Right now it's a relatively small number of cars and right. a relatively small number of players, but we see a huge opportunity and huge growth in the sector over the next five years. So can we go take a drive? Yeah, sure. All Let's right. do it. We're going to check out, we're going to take a drive. We'll see you in the Thank car. You. driving a Lincoln MKZ 2017, and the reason this vehicle is so good for autonomous vehicle development is because a lot of the driving, steering, gas, and brakes is enabled through a system called drive-by-wire. Okay. And that means it's an electronic signal that goes through the CAN bus and initiates these features, locomotions in the vehicle, electronically. We can create an artificial electronic signal and inject it where it processes that information and artificially move the steering wheel with the brakes or the gas, like that way.
getting ready. Let's see, we're going through the drive. You're not really driving, are you? I'm not driving, man. <laughs> That's a whole thing. It's a command center. Ready? Three, two, one, go. Here we go. Besides operating as our safety driver, we haven't started going yet, so you you are on call. We look both ways. Now this is kind of interesting because I can see what Ben can see, and he can see what I can see, so it's kind of an infinite loop. He can see almost 360 degrees around the car. Ben can hear everything that we can hear in the vehicle if someone's honking at him. Making a right hand turn. I'm usually not a very good right seat driver because I complain about people getting too close to the curb so good job Ben. Stand nice and wide. For every latitude and longitude coordinate we would get data points such as bandwidth and latency and if there's ever some sort of dead zone he or she would know that in advance and know that they could not engage the vehicle. You could even geofence that often too right if it's just a dead zone. Correct. You make the car go around it even if it's not the most efficient route. Correct. How consistent is the coverage, the mobile coverage that you find? Say T-Mobile is not good in a certain area but AT&T is good. Okay. Then we would use AT&T's service. If the latency is shifting we're always going to make sure that you can steer, that you can have brakes, and other stuff that isn't as high of a priority falls lower down the list. We're now going to go into a gas station. Gas stations obviously don't have lane markings. You're dealing with pedestrians, different vehicles coming in and out. But for us, obviously, since we're being driven by a human, uh, we'll be able to go through just as though it was a human in the driver's seat. It's really just about a human being able to read the motions of the car, right? right. You take a few inches forward, then you pause. It's understanding that like, are they giving scenario you the so that you understand when you can move forward or when you might need to peel back. But at the end of the day, you hope that at some point the autonomous vehicles will be able to handle an increasing Correct. number of these edge Correct. cases. We're gathering data, critical data, right? Edge case scenario data so that we can feed that back to our customers so that they can have the data that they need to further train these vehicles. That was fun. <laughs> Great job out there. Thank you. What does it feel like driving this thing? Driving remotely is actually very different from driving a car normally. And I know it might sound obvious, but there's a lot of things we take for granted driving the car. For example, you don't actually understand the momentum shifts that are happening in the vehicle, so you don't know how hard you're braking, or you might have a dip, different depth perception because the optics on the cameras. All these things kind of add up into a completely different driving experience. As I'm developing the system, I'm testing it and seeing exactly the information that I need in order to create that safe and smooth driving experience. And so I'm looking at what's difficult for me as a remote operator, or what information am I lacking, and then I go back and develop those things. So at the federal level, there's a bill in the House and a bill in the Senate, neither of which have been passed, but we expect that one will go the distance this year. So you might actually have the rare scenario where the regulation outpaces the technology, which is a good problem to have. In right, fact, I would right. say it's not a problem right. at all. Having a human who's going to intervene on your behalf will be really important. Right. On the business standpoint, uh, we have several deals are already closed, some pilots planned over the next few months. So you'll be seeing a lot more, I think, uh, of us uh, very soon okay. out in the market. Thanks for sharing the ride Thanks and, uh, lot, and taking care of us. Appreciate it. Thank you. We're at Phantom Auto in Mountain View, California. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.